I actually lied to you. I'm not introducing just one non-Fujifilm camera to the channel. There's actually another one, and it's in this box as well. So it is with a heavy heart that I'm informing you all I will be withdrawing from the Fujifilm Creators X Photographer program and no longer being an official Fujifilm M ambassador. And to ease any worries about the brand, I promise that all things are good between me and Fujifilm. This decision was not made lightly. And it was ultimately based on my career trajectory and overall shift in my freelance creative business. So when I first joined the Fujifilm Creator Program, which is the ambassador program in the US in July of 2020, I was still a full-time wedding photographer. And as many of you know, my mission is to teach 1 million people to become photographers through the power of the internet. So that's social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. And as I've been working to tackle this mission over the past two and a half years, I was actually able to shift from wedding photography to becoming a full-time content creator. And while this shift is really great for my mission, it unfortunately means being limited to one brand is not really in line with my long-term goals as an educational content creator around photography. Don't get me wrong, I, I love Fujifilm cameras, and even though I'm not going to be a Fujifilm uh, official ambassador anymore, I still actually plan to create content about Fujifilm's products. For me, you know, like when I look at the outlook of being able to teach 1 million people, just being limited to one camera brand is not really within that value system for me. It has been an honor to get to know the Fujifilm team and the rest of the ambassadors, and I'm extremely grateful for all the opportunities and support that the Fujifilm family has provided me. Like, I've got nothing but love for the Fujifilm crew. You know, being part of this Fujifilm family has been really one of the highlights of my career as a photographer. I was able to meet, you know, other creators across the country. I've been able to build some relationships and friendships that I really do think are going to last a lifetime. And I will always cherish my experiences and memories while being part of the team. And I'm glad to have learned a lot of the lessons as I'm able to take these on to the next chapter of my kind of creative journey. And with that, in order to end on kind of like a brighter note, I'd actually like to share with you my camera lineup for photography in 2023. Some of these tools you already know that I've been using and one of them you don't know. And the reason is because it's still... It's still in this box over here, so let me get it. But before I share these cameras with you all, I wanted to quickly mention today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace for over 10 years now and their templates are super easy to use and they make it really easy to create and maintain a professional looking photography website. My Squarespace website was really an essential part of how I built my wedding photography business. It allowed me to showcase my portfolio to potential clients, share recent weddings and engagement shoots on my blog, and I was able to receive inquiries from potential clients through my contact form. And now that I've moved on from wedding photography in this phase of my creative journey, I'm now using my website to really empower and educate other photographers. I sell presets for those who are struggling with their workflows. I publish gear reviews and kind of tutorials for those navigating purchasing gear. And I'm actually in the process of updating it to reflect this new type of photography work that I've been creating to really encourage everyone to document just the everyday. It's really vital to have a website that you can and completely control, free from the constraints of social media algorithms. So if you're one of those photographers relying on your Instagram profile as the sole place to share your work and build your photography business, I would really consider making a website on Squarespace. You can visit squarespace.com slash Reggie Ballesteros to start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's talk about the cameras. So first up is the Fujifilm X100V. 
you all know that I've been using this um, for photography for the past three years since the camera's been out, but now it's actually been extremely popular. I consider it to be sort of kind of like a pocket journal of photography, something that you can explore ideas with, um, experiment, and then if you're going to take it to a bigger production, you can use your giant big professional cameras, but it's also capable of doing professional work itself. The next camera is the Fujifilm X70. So I actually had the Fujifilm X70 back in 2016 or something. I had it in all black. It was one of the cameras that I made a lot of my favorite photos with. And then I sold it in order to get the X-T20 and go down this Fujifilm rabbit hole. I've always wanted to pick it back up just because I'm super in love with the 28 millimeter focal length. It really is one of the best kind of like pocketable point and shoot cameras that Fujifilm makes, you know, more compact than the X100V. So this is a camera that I've been taking out with me pretty much on more of the everyday carry basis when I'm not shooting with film or with the X100V. And speaking of film, I have also the Fujifilm Class EW, which I made a recent video on. It was pretty much my favorite camera of last year because of, you know, the lessons that I learned transitioning and experimenting with analog photography after photographing digital kind of like mirrorless, quick, speedy workflows through wedding photography for 10 years. So expect um, some more videos on this and photo walks where I use it in conjunction with maybe the X70, the X100V, or this next camera that I'm going to talk about, the Fujifilm X-T5. So I know I mentioned um, that I picked up the Fujifilm X-T5 and I made some decision videos between it and the X-H2, but I have never actually posted any content about it quite yet. Stay tuned because I'm actually going to be posting one very soon. It's going to be a one hour long photo walk condensed down to hopefully like half an hour or so, and it's going to be filled with a lot of value about lighting, composition, and just how I approach scenes that are kind of like an everyday situation, not necessarily portraits or weddings or anything like that, but just creating on your own and kind of like taking a look at the world through the lens of photography. So now let's get onto the camera that you don't know about that is inside this box from Moment. So the cool thing is as a super affiliate for Moment, one of the things that they kind of give us as perks is to have kind of a holiday creator bonus. So every affiliate sale that I get, I get a little bit of store credit back. And because of how much I was able to kind of generate revenue, I was able to purchase a camera that I've been really wanting to use for quite a long time. All right, the camera that I'm going to be introducing into the channel as the first non-Fujifilm camera is the Ricoh GR3. It is a 28 millimeter equivalent, um, so similar to the Fujifilm X70 APS-C camera. I believe it actually has IBIS also, so that's a cool thing. It has a sensor similar to the Fujifilm sensor, so 26 megapixels, I believe. But it is a very inconspicuous point-and-shoot camera, very popular with street photographers, all blacked out, like very nondescript, not as flashy as a Fujifilm camera. And I'm curious to see how it works for everyday documentation concerning I'm a dad. I like to take photos just on my everyday outings and this is actually pocketable. So the Fujifilm X100V is not pocketable. So I'm very excited to implement the Ricoh GR3 into what I've been showing you all and see what it can do. And it's exciting because they actually have a new film simulation for this camera that just came out. And I'm curious to see how that compares to Fujifilm film simulations. And I actually lied to you. I'm not introducing just one non-Fujifilm camera to the channel. There's actually another one, and it's in this box as well. And that camera is the Ricoh GR3X which is actually a little bit newer. I think it's a pretty much the same camera as the Ricoh GR3, except it has a 40 millimeter equivalent 2.8 lens on the Fujifilm equivalent. That's like a 27 millimeter 2.8. So I'd really like to compare this to the X-T5 with the 27 millimeter 2.8 to see what the convenience difference is, especially because this camera doesn't have a tilt screen. It doesn't have a viewfinder and the X-T5 is a little bit bigger, has more resolution. Be prepared for a lot of camera comparisons between the X100V and the X70 and the GR3, and then maybe the X-T5 against the GR3X, the X100V versus the GR3X. There's a lot of possibilities, and I'm excited to be able to share this journey with you all and just start 
leaning into this process of everyday documentation. My ultimate goal with all of these cameras and this channel and the new direction of what I'm doing is to get away from using photography as a way to generate income um, because it's cool to have a business, but I think in order to reach the broader community about photography, I'd like to be able to share with you all my unique approach to photography that is really a sense of mirroring the technical aspects of photography with the documentation of the everyday, the mundane, the, the moments in the spaces that we are around that we end up forgetting or taking for granted. Because photography for me is a way to really just like enrich my life by noticing the beauty in everything around me. So if that sounds like something that you'd like to add to your approach to photography or something that you just like to learn more about, please consider subscribing to the channel if you don't already and stay tuned and I'm looking forward to having you all follow me along for the ride.